One common application of depth first search is what's called topological sort. This is a way of organizing the vertices of a graph such that you can determine some processing order. This is used in things like de designing a factory and you need to decide in what order does an assembly line take place. To make something like a car, there are hundreds if not thousands of parts and processes that must be undertaken. Some of those can be done concurrently and then sometimes there are bottlenecks. How do you decide what order to do that in? So a topological sort is a way of doing that. It's actually incredibly easy to do. So let's try and walk through it. Here's an example of a directed acyclic graph that is critical for this. It only works on a directed acyclic graph. So we have arrows and you aren't going to be any cycles in this graph. Let's assume that we start at vertex A. And then like we've always done before, we're going to proceed in numerical order. So we go from A to C and then from C to F and then from F to I. And let's color those in as we go. One, two, three. And we have a discovery time. One, two, three, four. Well, there's nowhere to go from I, so we finish I. There's nowhere to go from F, so we finish F. There is somewhere to go from C, so we will have to keep exploring. But before we do that, we're going to update our coloring to make sure we don't forget. So we update our coloring. From C, we can go over to D. And we color that to be blue because we just discovered it. It also gets our next discovery time, which is going to be 7. From D, there is nowhere to go. So we need to finish D, so we write down our finishing time. There's now nowhere to go from C, so we write down our finishing time. A, there's now nowhere new to go. However, there is going to be a special type of edge, so if we update our coloring to identify it properly. There is a forward edge. This is an edge you could have taken in theory, but we didn't. It's just the order we decided to process the vertices in. But there is nowhere not new to go from A. Note that doesn't identify a cycle. All it does is identify a alternative path or processing order that we could have taken. So we then finish with A. And if we're proceeding in numerical order, the next thing we're going to do is start at B. And we discover B. And then there's nowhere new to go from B, so we then immediately finish B. Really a novel there. And then if we're going in numerical order, we will then have to go over to E. And we start a new search at E. Also really boring. There's literally nowhere new to go from E, because there's nowhere we can go from E. So this is... 13, and then it immediately finishes, and it gets a 14, and we recolor it to be red. We then start another search over at G, the next in numerical order. We discover a cross edge, meaning we could have started at G and used that edge for something else. However, it's not a cycle that gets generated, and we have a discovery time on G of 15. And we go from G, we can go to one new location, which is down to H, which gets colored and assigned a discovery time. We then finish with H and give it a finishing time of 17. And then we finish with G because there's nowhere new to go from G and we color everything to be red. Notice there were no back edges. Those back edges are things that would have identified cycles. So our forest here is really weird looking because of the exact nature of what we did. We have a bunch of different trees. Now, how does topological sort work? This is actually an incredibly, incredibly easy algorithm. What we're going to do is sort the vertices in descending order of finishing time. So the biggest finishing time, the biggest number in red is 18. So we're going to write down the vertices in that order. So the biggest is G and then H. And then from there, we have E. From E, we have B. And then we have 10, 9, and 8. So we do A, C, D. And then we have F. And then we have I. And now let's draw in all the edges of this graph. There is an edge from G to H. So we'll draw these in in a different color. So G to H. And there's also one from G to F. Next, there is an edge from H to I. 
So we draw an edge from H to I. And then we have an edge from E to nothing. We have an edge from B to D. We have an edge from A to C and from A to D. We have an edge from C to D and we also have an edge from C to F. From F, we have an edge to I. Let's verify that we have the correct number of edges. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And in the graph, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine edges and nine edges. And if you notice, every edge flows from left to right. This guarantees that we never get this sort of weird bottleneck where we have to go back to a machine we've already processed. You can start by doing whatever G is telling you to do. So if you always go G, H, E, B, A, C, D, F, I, whatever those happen to mean, whatever machines those are, whatever things in the process they are, it will always work. And to emphasize what we did, we will quickly write down our finishing times to make sure we did this correctly. G was 18, H was 17, E was 14, B was 12, A was 10, C was 9, D was 8, F was 6, and I was 5. So it's descending order of finishing time. That's all we're doing. This is called the topological sort of the graph. You may get edges that cross, but we have this nice flow from left to right. So how does this algorithm work? It turns out it's incredibly easy because step one was do depth first search, step two sort. It turns out we can do those at the same time. So our pseudocode here is very pseudocody. To get the actual details, you need to modify the actual depth first search algorithm. But what we do is we call depth first search and compute all those finishing times. And as each vertex finishes, you add it to a linked list. So the second you finish a vertex, you add it to a linked list at the front. So you're always appending things to the front. So we would add first I to the front, then F to the front, then D to the front, then C to the front, and so on. So our linked list is going to build in a leftward manner. And the second we finish a vertex, we add it to the linked list. Then you return that linked list to the user. That is the topological sort of the vertices. So this gives you a processing order. There could be more than one processing order. In fact, these forward edges that we found, the A to D and the cross edges, B to D and C, G to F, tell us that there were some other processing orders we could have done. This allows you to theoretically make choices. If there's a reason for doing one over the other, you can also make that choice as a designer who's actually needs to use these vertices and this sort for a particular application. Last question is, how long does this algorithm take? If you look at this, this code is do DFS and append to a linked list. You should have no learned at some point that appending to a linked list takes constant time. So this is adding one additional constant time operation to every call of DFS. This takes the exact same runtime as DFS, B plus E or M plus N, however you want to write it, the exact same time. There are many other applications of death first search. The, there's too many to sort of go into. This is like sort of classic one. You can do things like generate a maze, a random maze by using death first search. We also mentioned cycle detection, which is another very useful thing. Something similar is going to be something like an Eulerian circuit, which you could theoretically modify depth first search to work with. It's not necessarily obvious how you do that, but there are ways to do that. There are algorithms that use very much something that looks like depth first search to do that. They may or may not be the most efficient, but they exist. And there are a litany of other applications. They're very sporadic, though. So this is an algorithm to keep in the back of your head. Same with breadth first search. They are things that will show up sporadically. And it's just useful to remember that this thing is a thing that exists and a vague idea of what it does.